Earlier this year, I wrote a book titled Write a Winning Research Proposal. And today I was shocked to see that I was able to convert much of the advice from the book into a draft proposal automatically. And of course, I'm talking here about using ChatGPT. Well, actually, I had tried using ChatGPT multiple times over the past year. And even though the technology is really astonishing, I wasn't convinced with the results. So even though I tried all these fancy templates for prompting the GPT and, and telling what kind of voice and so on they have to use, it didn't really work very well. So I sort of dropped it, at least for using in academic writing. But now what happened is that uh, OpenAI, which is the parent company uh, operating ChatGPT, they released a new version which allows you to specify how the GPT should work. So I did it for writing research proposals. Now I could take the advice from my book and I could directly input into the GPT to create the first draft of a research proposal. And let me clarify here that I'm here talking only about a idea that comes from the researcher and is converted into a research proposal. I'm not talking about creating a research idea here, right? So we take an existing idea and we convert it into a proposal draft. So the way that we tell GPT what the idea is, is through a research project canvas. And this is a concept that I introduced in the book. So basically the canvas is a one page template which uh, summarizes the key points of a research proposal. So it's, it's like an outline of a research proposal. So it consists of these blocks which mimic basically the structure of a research proposal. So including problem, objectives, participants, methodology, and so on. So what I would do when I write a research proposal, I would create such an outline. In this case, I did it through using uh, post-it notes and uh, I would describe, you know, the main parts of the research proposal. And then I would take this canvas and start writing. So this makes it much easier to uh, get going. Well, now I was able to actually take this research project canvas and upload it to the chat GPT and make it do the writing for me. So let me show you how it works. But before I do, uh, remember that OpenAI is a private company. It is uh, therefore a little bit tricky to decide whether you should uh, upload your ideas uh, you know, to uh, a third party, uh, because this is basically meaning you are sending your document to them and uh, they will use it uh, in God knows what ways. So just be conscious that uh, they are going to use your data. And uh, even though I unclicked the thick box, which uh, says uh, that uh, I don't want to share uh, the data with them, if you have some sensitive information, don't use this tool. So with that said, uh, I want to show you how it works. So I called it the research proposal writer. And I say here, uh, you need to upload a field research project canvas to generate a research project description. And that's basically it. So I would go here and I would uh, look for the research project canvas. So this is just a a JPEG file and uh, you will see that it's exactly what I showed you earlier. So basically there are some sticky notes which uh, outline the research project idea. And now I would just uh, click on uh, send the message. So it uploads the canvas to ChatGPT and uh, you'll see <laughs> the magic starting right now. So it says thank you for uploading the canvas. It asks me now whether there is uh, any specific uh, objective that I consider more important than uh, the other ones. So I made it to ask uh, questions because I really want this to be your idea, right? So it uh, it is your idea that uh, 
GPT is converting into a proposal. So it's not generating, or at least it shouldn't generate uh, much new ideas. Let's say all objectives are equal. And by the way, uh, I called it the vision two. It's, it's just a, a code name that I used up here. So I said uh, vision two. And that's why it's using this as the title. So as you can see, it already came up with a title and it now starts uh, preparing an outline of the proposal. And then as the next step, um, the user can tell it to create the full proposal. The contents of uh, this proposal exactly will mimic uh, what was written in the research project canvas. So we will start with the problem and we'll go to objectives, methodology, resources, participants, results and impact, dissemination, timeline, and the budget. So I made it to follow always uh, this same uh, sequence of describing the proposal. So it, it, it is really astonishing to me that uh, just from these uh, basically bullet points on sticky notes, uh, it is able to really capture uh, what is the essence of the research proposal and already write so much of the uh, text that uh, I would have to write myself when I'm preparing the proposal. So now it's uh, gone to the description of the participants and it even recognizes that I said, uh, okay, uh, I'm there and uh, I imagine that I'm an expert in neural networks and there's Jane there. And if uh, we go uh, here, we can see really uh, Jane is there and me is there and also Robert should be there. So let's go and see. Uh, and indeed um, the GPT has written that Robert is there uh, and he's a visual communication expert. So now it's gone to the results and impact part. And it's uh, describing how the cyclist injuries uh, uh, should be reduced by 70%. And this is exactly what I had here in the uh, canvas as well. So 70% fewer cyclist injuries. Now it's going to the dissemination part. And the timeline, so uh, you can see that uh, it should take three years. And it's quite amazing because for uh, for the timeline, I actually uh, wrote it uh, by hand and, and there's sort of a improvised uh, gun chart here, which says year one, year two, year three, and deliverable one, two, three, and four. And let's see whether, uh, and unfortunately <laughs> there is a network error uh, showing here. So sometimes I've seen this happen uh, so this basically means that I would have to regenerate. Of course, it's a new tool and we have to be aware that uh, it's going to improve with time. And, and this is just a sort of a beta version and that we can uh, try and use. So I would click the regenerate now. Okay. So now we're uh, back to the place where it uh, broke down the previous time. So it's describing the budget. And as you can see, it uh, matches exactly what uh, we have in the proposal, right? So we have 110,000 for researchers, 60 for servers and gear. And that's what it is uh, describing here. So it says this outline provides a structured roadmap for the Vision 2 project. If direction uh, aligns with your expectations, I'll proceed to writing actually now the research proposal itself. So I made it uh, to target 5,000 words with the, the research uh, proposal itself. Um, and quite often it actually doesn't do this. Uh, I tried with different uh, topics and different uh, research uh, uh, project canvases. And uh, if it seems to me that if the topic is sort of uh, trendy and there is a lot of information on it, uh, online, uh, it creates a more thorough and longer explanation, uh, various, uh, a more niche topic that is more specific to a particular field may be uh, struggling with this uh, word target. But uh, this particular topic, 
uh, is on uh, the use of machine learning for computer vision. So obviously there's quite a lot of information on that online. So I imagine that it was trained and it already knows uh, a lot about this topic uh, so that it can actually uh, apply that now to our research proposal. All right. So uh, with this outline, I would now be able to uh, check it and tell if there's something that I would uh, like to uh, change in the, in the outline uh, before starting to write the full proposal. Uh, in this case, let's just assume that uh, everything is correct. And if something wouldn't be correct, you would just go here and uh, just with natural language, you would tell in which section, what exactly to change. So in this case, it thanks me for uh, confirming that everything is uh, right. And now it actually starts writing the full research proposal. So describe the problem, the scientific gap. And uh, I made it in a way so that it stops uh, after each of these uh, sections, right? So now we have uh, de defined the, the problem. Uh, which is the first block right here. And uh, before going to the objectives, usually it would stop. If the proposal is shorter, sometimes it would just go on and uh, write all the sections. Uh, so in this case, it was stopping and we have to confirm that we would like to write the next section. So I just say continue and uh, now it will proceed with the next section so describing now the aims, we have the cyclist body language adapted the autonomous vehicle movement. And uh, it's exactly what uh, is written here in the post-it notes. So you see just from these uh, three short post-it notes, it's now generating a full description here uh, with the aims. All right, now I'm going to fast forward this video and uh, just so that you can see what the end result looks like. And by the way, there were several reasons why I made it to stop before writing each next section. So the first reason is that there's a certain limit for the amount of uh, text that uh, the chat GPT can generate in one answer. So I don't want to stop it uh, in the middle of a description or limit it to a certain uh, uh, amount of uh, words. So I wanted rather to describe and the research thoroughly. So that was the first reason. And the second is obviously that uh, it is easier to come back here and change something if you're not satisfied with the description. So you'd, you would be able to uh, come here, read it and uh, give now new orders for how to improve or change this particular uh, section. So in this case, let's just assume that it's okay. So I say continue. Okay, so now basically the project has been described. So of course, by no means this is a full project description and you should never consider this as something that you can su submit to the funding agency, but you will agree with me that it's a damn good start. You would go through it now and uh, edit it and re-edit to make sure that all the ideas are exactly like you imagined. You would add uh, literature sources, you would never trust and uh, what it is uh, telling you because uh, these large language models are known for hallucinating. So coming up with the uh, stuff that doesn't exist, but uh, it is for sure much easier to start from this document than it would be just from scratch and looking at your empty uh, PC screen. So uh, the next step that uh, I asked the GPT to do is to write an abstract. So if you're happy with this uh, project description, you could say continue and uh, it will generate an abstract of approximately 350 words. Okay, now the abstract is ready and let's say that we find it uh, acceptable. So the one last thing that uh, I asked uh, it to do for you is to create a logo. So I would say, okay, error in the message stream. 
Okay, obviously I'm not able to show you how to create the logo right now. There seems to be some uh, glitch in the system, but that would have been the last step in the process. So it would create you a logo. Uh, sometimes it's better than other times, uh, but uh, at least it can serve as a good inspiration. Okay, so the last thing I want to show you is uh, how to actually download the research project canvas so that you would be able to input the ideas and the concept of the research project into the chat GPT. Right, so you need to go to prerecognize.com and here uh, in the tools you would go to research project canvas and it opens a web page where you can uh, scroll down and you'll find a way to download the research project canvas right here. So then you can download it and edit it in the way you like and basically this serves as the input for writing the research proposal draft in the chat GPT. All right, so that was something that really amazed me today and I wanna ask you also to try it out and uh, see how it works for you and for sure write me feedback. I'll be very happy to see what you uh, have achieved with this tool. One last thing that I wanna mention is that of course I don't see your inputs and the project that it generates. Uh, you don't have to be worried that you're sharing uh, some information or the, the canvas and the ideas about your project with me. I don't see any of this, uh, but like I said, this is going to open AI and they uh, use it to actually generate this uh, proposal description. So be cautious of the fact that you are sharing your ideas with this company. Let me know how it goes. I would love to hear what results have you achieved with this tool and uh, let's see what it brings for better or for worse. This is definitely a game changer in how we write research proposals.